Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Virginia Steen. Uh, Ginny spoke um, yesterday, so I won't spend a lot of time on her introduction. A woman who needs no introduction. She's going to talk about targeted therapy of systemic sclerosis. Going, you can see my disclosures. That's not any different, but um, kind of hard to tell what's going on here with the uh, with the uh, slides. But targeted therapies, <laughs> scleroderm is a, a very complicated disease, and certainly as we have um, struggled with trying to find treatments, I think we all realize that there are many different aspects of, of scleroderma that, that need to be treated. And we don't know the primary uh, cause of it, um, but we do know that there are endothelial cells, we do know that there are fibroblasts, and we do know that there are immune-mediated um, types of things. Any chance we're going to get? <sighs> So, well, this is a slide that has lots of arrows on it and lots of different features on it, and you can't see a thing here. So maybe we'll move on. And so this is another one. So I was going to try to show that we're going to focus it down onto different things. This is really challenging here. Um, anyway, so we'll start with the pathogenesis of things. Uh, potentially, there's a genetic uh, background to it, a permissive genetic background. And some of the uh, evidence based on this is that there is a clustering of um, uh, scleroderma in families. We know that there's increased ANAs in families. Uh, we know that there's a different prevalence of scleroderma in different uh, ethnicities. We know that the HLA associations are the strongest with the scleroderma autoantibodies, um, and particularly high in the Choctaw Indians. Um, so that that uh, as high as like uh, 50, 60 percent uh, higher than others. At this point, here we go. All right. So here we go. So this is uh, where we have all the different cytokines and different factors and endothelia all interacting together, and it gets a, it's it's really a very complex uh, fa uh, issue. And then I'm going to what I'm going to try to do is to focus down on the different um, types of uh, uh, targets that we do have therapy for uh, at this uh, point in time. So we talked a little bit about the genetic factors. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that there's a very low frequency of scleroderma within twins. There's no difference between monozygotic and digozygotic twins, except for that the increase in ANAs is higher in the myo mono monozygotic twins. And then so now what we're doing is looking at all the different uh, SNPs and SNRPs and different things in the genetic uh, uh, pathways that uh, um, are trying to identify different subsets of uh, scleroderma. But we're not quite uh, to the point yet uh, where we're uh, able to focus the treatment on them. So we're going to first look at the uh, different uh, molecular and cellular uh, alterations in the different target cells and look at the B cells. And B cells are not particularly a um, major player as far as the pathogenesis, but they're extremely important as far as the autoantibodies and as far as markers of uh, um, our scleroderma subsets, which has really at this point uh, been uh, the best way to identify organ systems, prognosis, and treatment. So I talked a little bit yesterday about the problems with the commercial uh, ANAs and how it's really important to do an immunofluorescent ANA. Uh, and it's the only way that you can get a pattern um, on the immunofluorescent. And a lot of patterns have not been particularly helpful in other diseases, but in scleroderma, certainly the centromere pattern is extremely important. And another pattern that is also important is a nucleolar pattern. And so even though the nucleolar pattern isn't specific for scleroderma, within scleroderma, if you have a nucleolar pattern, it does have uh, some very important uh, auto antibody uh, associations, but unfortunately those antibodies are not commercially available. So the only way you know that you have those is by the uh, immunofluorescent pattern showing a nucleolar pattern. And so using these new methods that we talked about yesterday, um, unfortunately these immunobead methods and the, the flow cytometry and the different methods that they're using, they don't include the RNA polymerase 3 antibody, a very important antibody, and they don't include any of the nucleolar uh, uh, antibodies. 